All right, glad everybody can make it out this morning there. And uh, glad the plow trucks were out early this morning so we can make it pave our way here. All right, so we'll take our hymn books, the red book underneath the seat in front of you, and we'll turn to number 22, number 22, and we'll stand and sing, Are You Washed in the Blood? Number 22. <laughs> Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? Cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hide the garments that are stained within and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? All right, let's flip over to number 66. Number 66 at Calvary. to me there my 
I burn his soul found liberty at Calvary. Now I give to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Now we can grab our Bibles. We're going to read our memory verse. We'll read it four times. Please turn to Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. And let's begin. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loved little. All right, we'll take our hymn books one last time. We'll turn to number 173. 173, Love Lifted Me. peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling, in His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to to Him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Sea, billows by his will obey. He or 
Savior wants to be me saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. good playing and singing, and let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father, as we wait before you in prayer, we thank you for this morning that we could be out in your presence in this place with the people whom you love and who we love. I pray, Lord, for so many families um, home with them. Uh, ailing children, and then adults as well. Those who are away from us, traveling, we pray as, Lord, the snow continues to fall. Pray for journey mercies for them back to town. And then, Lord, those who are at work, we ask you to watch over them and keep them safe. Pray for the children in the nursery. And Lord, thank you for those who have recovered and uh, this is the time of year that we get lax in our dress and uh, sometimes go out without being dressed properly. And then just the time of the year that we live in, people get sick. So Lord, again, we thank you for your grace, for your bountiful mercy, for your healing hand. And Lord, these colds and flus have to run their course, unfortunately. So give mercy and give grace. And then, Lord, we thank you for each family that has come out to be with you and with us. We pray because of this. We ask you to bless them. Pray for those listening over the airways. Pray, O oh God, that they might hear the truth of thy word and make a lasting, eternal decision for your son who shed his blood, died on the cross, paid our sin debt in full, went to the grave, rose again the third day, ascended to heaven, and coming again. Lord, I want to pray specifically this morning for that last Gentile. When that last Gentile is saved, he's coming for us. So again, we pray for our government. We pray for our new premier. And Lord, we pray that you'll give her a stick to itness. If she doesn't know thee as Savior, we pray for her soul once again. Pray, Lord, that she might have some people of character around her to lift her up. Ask you now to bless our morning service as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Let's have the men come this morning. Receive our morning offering. Always a... Uh, Blessed time to be able to give to the work of the Lord and giving, of course, <clears throat> always depicts our spirituality or lack thereof. Someone has said and true that Jesus spoke more about giving than he did about heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. In Matthew's gospel, he talks about treasures. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, but we need food, raiment, and rip over our head for sure. Where moth and rust doth not corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. 
But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. And here it is. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And Pedro, would you pray for this morning's offering, please? And Father God, we thank you again for having us this morning. Thank you for uh, this offering that we want to give unto you. Give us again that you place this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for that offertory. If you'll take your Bibles, please, once again, and find our chapter this morning, Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Once again, Jesus is in the midst of his enemies. If you do anything for the Lord, you're going to have enemies. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Jesus said, if they hated me, they'll hate you. 28 times in the book of Luke, Pharisees are spoken of. They were religious bigots in our Lord's day. They chided him. They tried to torment him. They tried to attack him. And here in our text this morning that we're reading from, a tremendous, tremendous chapter, speaks about a tremendous godly man by the name of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, you'll remember, of course, was the cousin of the Lord Jesus Christ, born six months earlier, his mother Elizabeth and Zechariah, his daddy. He was the forerunner of the Lord. He came baptizing. Now, baptism does not save. Baptism is the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So baptism shows death and not life. So the Old Testament saints were saved looking to the cross. Those who confessed their sins before John the Baptist, not to him, but before him, were looking to the cross and looking to the Savior. And, of course, baptism shows the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so he speaks a lot about John and talks about what a great man he was. And then, of course, in the midst, there's always trouble. And uh, we find that in verse 30. But the Pharisees, notice the word but, but the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. They refused to follow John and believers' baptism and rejected it and want to stay with their religion. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They're like unto children sitting in the marketplace, calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you say, notice, he hath the devil. The son of man came eating and drinking and you say, behold, notice what they called our Lord a gluttonous man and a wine bibber. And I like this part. A friend of publicans and sinners. 
That gets me in. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Now here's the setting. A Pharisee invites Jesus to a meal, not because he wanted to fellowship with the Lord, but because he wanted to find something whereby they might attack him. Verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, and notice how she's described, which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet. Now in Bible times, they ate reclining on a couch and the elbow on the table and then their food. So their feet were behind them in the reclining position. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, now watch what he does. He spake within himself, saying, this man, so he's negating the deity of Christ, this man, if he were a prophet, he's negating the dignity of Christ, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. They negated, of course, his discernment, his deity, his dignity, his discernment, because he's God and he knows what's going on. And Jesus answering said unto him, now, Simon didn't speak aloud. He spoke within himself. <laughs> How would you like to read people's minds? <laughs> How would you like to be able to, when someone comes in your presence and say, that's the ugliest dress I've ever seen in my life. You say, well, I like it. <laughs> so here Simon is speaking to himself, but the Lord being God answers him. That would have got my attention. Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. Now Jesus is going to give an illustration of a parable of two people in debt. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence, the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, you and I have nothing to pay in the matter of salvation. Jesus said, what should a profit of a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing, nothing. You can't buy it, it's free. Hallelujah. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them loved him most? My subject this morning is the love of Jesus. My topic is forgiveness. Which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, notice the, notice the condescension and condescending voice. I suppose that he whom he forgave most. And he said, Jesus said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, sit thou this woman, I entered thy house, thou gave me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with a broken heart, with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head. Remember, a woman's hair 
is her glory and her beauty. Thou gavest me no kiss. Not a kiss on the lips, but you know how they did in Bible times and they still do in the Middle East. But this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. She washed his feet. She wiped his feet. She kissed his feet. She anointed his feet. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Notice, forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And watch the murmuring of the crowd. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. And Father, what a tremendous text. Tremendous text. In my own personal reading this week, this was a chapter that I read from. And it spoke once again to my heart. I pray this morning that we might examine ourselves, not our neighbors, not our spouses, not our parents or our children, but ourselves. And I pray that we might look in and see how much we really love thee. What is it that stops a twice born child of God for being obedient, submissive, and following thee? Speak to us through thy word. Holy Spirit, illuminate it to us. Help us to, as it were, draw a circle around ourselves this morning and allow the Spirit of God to search our hearts and see what our attitude is, especially those who've been born again especially those who've had their sins forgiven and are without gratitude and thanksgiving and service and sacrifice. Bless now the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Last time we looked at a saintly lady, possibly by the name of Mary, who came in the presence of the Lord and uh, broke her alabaster box and poured it out on the Lord. And Jesus said she did what she could. In that setting, the disciples were enraged that the Lord would do such a thing, and that is to allow this unnamed woman to pour out a year's wages on his head for his burying. Judas was the instigator, and he began to demand, why wasn't it sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Jesus had to say, let her alone. Now the setting here, of course, we're not aware of Bible times because we weren't there. And we only know certain things by Jewish historians like Josephus and others. But in Bible times, for a woman to disrupt a meeting was a big deal. I said last week that Jesus is the only true and honest, and I say the word religious reverently, that cares for women. And he loves women. 
and women ministered to him in Bible times. So here is a woman, very possibly a prostitute, a woman of the street, whereas in Mark's setting, Mark 14, uh, she was a saintly lady, possibly Lazarus and Martha's sister Mary. She was saintly, but still a sinner. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. There's no perfect man. There's no perfect lady. We're all sinners. But here this woman has an opportunity and she takes it. The door is open. She's heard about the Lord Jesus and she runs in and flings herself at his feet. Broken with a broken life. I mean, you think about this. I'd like you to turn while I'm speaking here to the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. If you don't know where it's at, you can look in your concordance. But I, I want you to see something about prostitution. And I want you to see something about murder in the Bible. Someone may have said, I, I'm too dirty to be saved. I'm too ugly to be saved. My sins are overwhelming. I don't think that Jesus can save me. Well, Isaiah takes care of that in Isaiah chapter 1. So two horrible sins here. The sin of murder and the sin of prostitution. Verse 18. Come now. See, that's Jesus' invitation. Come now. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now. Now. Don't put it off. Don't procrastinate about salvation. When I get older, maybe I'll get saved. No, it's now. And the Bible says, my spirit should always strive with man. When God convicts the heart of a sinner, you need to come now. And so Isaiah says, come now. Now just think about this. This is God saying to the sinner, it's all right to come. You can come just as you are. So many people think, well, I have to get baptized before I can come. I have to join a church before I come. Which, which one do you join? Which one is right? They're just churches. Man-made buildings. Salvation is of the Lord. But come now. Well, you know, when I clean up my life, then I'll come. No, come now. Notice what he says now. Come now and let us reason together. Really? God's saying, let's talk about it now. Let's discuss it. Said Jehovah. The word Lord, there is an all uppercase. That's Jehovah. The self-existing God who reveals himself to us. Though your sins, here it is, be as scarlet, prostitution. Selling your body. Oh, how heart, God's heart is broken. We think about young girls sold into prostitution by their parents. I think about the border at the United States and all those illegal immigrants coming in and then being sold, sold to the cartels, sold to go into America and work and pay their debt. How horrible and how wicked and how ungodly government people can be, and they are. And I'm glad the Bible says that all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burned with fire and brimstone. Scarlet, children being sold, Human trafficking, drugs, the wickedness of sin. My beloved, when you get in love with Jesus, you're going to hate sin. Some people say about me, he's, he doesn't have any love. There's no love in that guy's voice when he's talking about sin. Well, if you know what sin is, you know all about love. And because you love, you warn. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him, prostitute, murderer, potentate, beggar, can come. 
They shall be as white as snow. Ooh. I want to say to all you listening on the internet who didn't come to church this morning because of the snow, don't you dare go to school tomorrow morning. Don't you dare go to work tomorrow morning. Just saying that in love. Just saying that in love. You do what you want to do. White as snow. I like the white stuff, don't you? Just love it. I just, I just love it. I don't have a garage. And I'm so thankful for the ladies that came this morning and shoveled my snow. The ladies of the church shoveled my snow this morning. How precious is that? They didn't. <laughs> but it snows. And you look out and say, it's snowing. God sent it. He made the season, so rejoice in it, amen? Go out and build a snowman. Go outside and have a snowball fight. I love snowball fights. Problem is I can't bend over and get up as fast as I used to. And we'd have snowball fights with the children. Uh, they'd get my little ball head and throw snow. <laughs> they just love it. Mm. I'm your pastor. I don't care. <laughs> so, back to seriousness. Why does snow? Though they be red like crimson murder, they should be as wool. Isn't that precious? White like a lamb. White like the snow. 64, Isaiah 64. What shall a prophet of the man he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Come now, the Lord says. And then you may think that you merit salvation. You don't. Neither do I. Salvation is free. It's by faith. And it's forever. Isaiah 64 and verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. All of our righteousnesses. See, these Pharisees thought they were righteous. Self-righteous. They thought they were above others. And they didn't need a savior. Because after all, they were the elite of that day. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all of our righteousness are filthy rags. And we do fade as a leaf. And our inequities like the wind have taken us away. So, this Pharisee did not do the common courtesy in Bible times. He invites Jesus in, demeans his deity. This man, his dignity, he is a prophet. He's more than a prophet, he's God's son. His discernment. Well, if this man really was God, he would know. He knew all about it, and yet he loved her. And this Pharisee did not have the courtesy. In Bible times, you walked with sandy shoes and sandals and hot feet and the sand. And, and when you came to someone's home, they washed your feet. They would do the custom kiss side of the cheek. They would dry your feet. So here is this woman. And isn't it interesting? He said to the woman, verse 50, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Verse 37, a woman, a sinner. Jesus turned to the woman and chided. Simon. Simon, what about you, buddy? How about you? You neglected me. You didn't care for me. But this woman of the world came with a broken heart for her sin. And she wept. And as she wept, her tears touched my feet. 
And then she took that which was honorable. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse number 15. Turn there for a moment. I'd like you to see it. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 15. In Bible times, they wore veils. Sometimes people do that today. Sometimes there are churches where the ladies go and they wear hats because they take this verse out of its context. Verse 12. For as the woman is of the man, so is the man also by the woman. But all things are of God. But all things of God. Judge in yourself. Is it commonly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Did not nature even teach you that if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him? What is that? The animal kingdom. Linus is bald. The lion has mane. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. So think about how humiliated this woman was. She took her hair down possibly. Usually young women have long hair and older women may have a little bit shorter. But she took it down and began to dab at his feet and dry his feet. And then she did something unusual, extremely unusual. Jesus said we should wash one another's feet because our feet get dirty. It isn't that we say it, we do it actually, literally. But being willing to humble before our brothers and sisters to wash their feet. But she kissed his feet over and over and over as talking about his feet. What's the significance of his feet? Because every word that Jesus went, he did good. John the Baptist said, as Jesus walked, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. As Jesus walked, John said, behold the Lamb of God. So the walking of Jesus, he went around doing good. Raising the dead, causing the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, the leper to be clean, the cripple to walk, bringing back dead people from life, back to life from death. But you know, those feet were eventually nailed to the cross. The last things the disciples saw when he had sent it to heaven was the nail-pierced feet of our Lord. She kissed those feet. And then she anointed his feet. With the, just like Mary did in Mark 14. She anointed his feet. What a testimony. Now I like to think about the fact of this woman being forgiven. Turn to Luke now chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. We have another Pharisee. Luke chapter 18, you're probably familiar with this text of Scripture. A good man lost, a bad man saved. Hey, a good man lost, a bad woman saved in chapter 7. Now notice, please, Luke 18, verse 9. And he spake this parable. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in, see it, themselves. This Pharisee was trusting his self-righteousness and condemned that woman. Now here's another guy. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, one a publican or a tax collector. The Pharisee stood, now watch it, and prayed thus with himself. Did you see that? 
God didn't even hear his prayer. Prayed with himself. These long-winded prayers that church, unless it's a prayer meeting, long-winded prayers are not necessary. In fact, Jesus in his prayers, public prayer, was very short in his prayers. Elijah, when he went up against the false prophets, 73-word prayer, and God's fire fell. So they went up to pray, one of Pharisee, one of publican. The Pharisee stood and played, prayed thus with himself, I thank thee that I am not as other men. See that? Condescending on others. I'm so thankful I'm not like other men. Extortioners, unjust, idolaters, and even as this publican. Now here's what I'm all about. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off. That's where the sinner is. Far off. Afar off. You know, every once in a while, the Holy Spirit will bring things back to my memory from when I was a young man. And you know what I do? Even though my sins are forgiven, I confess it all over again. When he brings those things to my mind, I want to have a clear conscience. And I want to have a clean heart. And I want to have God's power in my life. And I confess it. So when I think about my life, God has a way of humbling preachers and people. So when you think that you're too big, you're not. Pride go up before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. The publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. Here's the problem, my beloved. But smote himself upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell thee, this man went down to his house justified, declared righteous before a holy God, just as if he never sinned, rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself should be abased, and he that humbled himself should be exalted. Now go to the book of Ephesians, please, chapter 1. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1, please. So the prideful Pharisee we have, verse 36, verse 39. The woman, verses 37, 38, a sinner, woman of the streets, weeping, wiping, kissing, anointing. The Savior, this man's a debtor, this man's a debtor. Uh, by the way, Simon, you owe five or 50. She owes 500. She has the better debt than you. And yet, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. As Jesus confronts Simon, I think Simon began to shiver a little bit in his sandals. Now Ephesians chapter 1, how very, very wonderful. Verse 3. I'm talking about the love of Jesus. I'm talking about forgiveness. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, 3. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy, without blame before him, in love. Having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. It's God's will for you and I as sinners to come into God's family. We're not born into God's family. We're born into Adam's family. And Adam all die. And Christ all are made alive. We're all descendants of Adam and Eve. And therefore born sinners. Lost and on our way to hell. We need to meet up with the loving Savior. To the praise of his glory, of his grace. When he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now here it is. In whom we have redemption through his blood. You see that? One drop of blood. 
one drop of precious blood. Know ye not that you're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, received by the feigned conversation of your mothers, but, uh, fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, who was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for us. In whom we have redemption through his blood, now watch it, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Psalms 103, please. Psalms 103. Oh, that we might see this, my beloved. Psalms 103. Again, God dealt with me on Monday on this chapter as I read through it, not looking for a sermon, but just reading it. Hmm. I just spoke about a woman who broke her alabaster box. Now, here's another woman sinner Psalms 103 what a psalm what a psalm just look at it with me please bless the Lord O my soul all that is within me bless his name Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What, what are they? Who forgiveth thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. He hath not dealt with us, verse 10, he hath not dealt with us after our sins. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Or we'd all be in hell. But thank God. He's a loving, merciful. Look at verse 8. The Lord, merciful, gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He had not dealt with us after our sins, but hath rewarded us according to our inequities. Verse number 12, watch this. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his child, his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Being afraid of the Lord is not cowering, but reverencing him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. Shall we stand together? What did the Lord do with her? He forgave her. She loved much. She loved much. How about you and me? Do we love him? Do we love him? Do we really love him with all of our heart? No room for anything else? I'm not talking about the thing that pumps blood, but our very being, our soul. Do we love him with all of our life? All of our mind? All of our spirit? All of our strength? And then do we love our neighbor as we love ourselves? Who's your neighbor? 
Well, if you're married, it's your wife. It's your husband. If you are a sibling, it's your sibling. We love him because he first loved us. Church at Ephesus, Jesus wrote, have many things to commend you about. What a good job you've done. However, but I have one thing against thee. What is it, Lord? What is it? Thou has left thy first love. Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me more than these? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Feed my lambs. Simon, son of Jonas, loveth me more than these? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love you. Feed my sheep. Simon, son of Joseph, Jonas, are you just affectionate towards me? Do you love me like you love your boat, your fishing boat? And the Bible says Simon's heart broke because he knew that he wasn't sold out to the Lord. We love him because he first loved us. And God commended his love towards us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. If I'd have written the Bible, I would have said, when you get your life right, begin to give your income to the Lord, begin to serve the Lord and be faithful to the Lord and surrender, then maybe I'll climb up on that cross. Oh, no. Why were we yet sinners? Christ died for us. What love is that? Matchless, bountiful love that he would love us and all he asks in return is like you say to your children or you say to your spouse, I love you. And what do they say? I love you too. Shall we pray? Our Father, our heads are bowed in an attitude of prayer. Oh, that our hearts would be open to you this morning. That we would be mindful of your love. Not some mushy love, but sacrificial love. Divine love that you impart to the twice born child of God. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit that is given to us. Lord, we can love others with your love not our selfish, jealous, condescending love, judgmental love, prideful love, but your love. We can love others. Oh God, thank you for the word forgiveness. Forgiveness. You said if we don't forgive our brothers and sisters, you won't forgive us. And yet, Lord, when we're offended, we want our pound of meat. We want vengeance. But we're to forgive. If we do not forgive, you do not forgive us. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your forgiveness by your shed blood. Someone says, well, God loves everybody, so everybody's saved. Not true. We're not saved because you love us. We're saved because your wrath was poured out on your son on Calvary's cross. And he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The love of Christ constrains us that we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead that they should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them. For them. Oh God, help us to confess our worldliness. Help us to confess our worldly living. Help us, oh God, to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Help us to be grateful and thankful 
for your love and forgiveness through your son. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Last Sunday of November, they say time flies, but it seems like it's going so rapidly, so rapidly. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Do you remember the time, the place, when Jesus caught up to you and you turned from your religion, self-righteousness, and turned from your sin and embraced him as your Savior? Do you remember that time, that place? The 27th of November, are you saved? Didn't ask if you're a Baptist, because there won't be any Baptists in heaven. There'll be no religion in heaven. Only righteousness that comes through the cross and the shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection of God's dear Son. So this morning, would you be willing to give a testimony? The time that you were saved, and you know that you're saved, and you know if you died this morning, or Jesus comes this morning, you'd be in heaven. If you know that for sure, would you just raise your hand as a testimony? I know my sins are forgiven. Heaven's my home. I know that. I know that. I know that. God bless you. Nobody's arrogant by doing that. But humbly, we raise our hand. Secondly, I'm not saved. I have religion. I maybe prayed a prayer as a little girl or a little boy years ago that my mom had me pray, but I don't know what it was all about. And I have doubt about my salvation. And I'm not sure that I'm on my way to heaven. Preacher, would you remember me in closing prayer this morning? That this November morning would be my morning of salvation. I need to be saved. Would you pray for me? Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Just lift it up. Don't reject Jesus. Don't reject Jesus. These Pharisees rejected him and his government and his wooing over their hearts. You need to be saved. Would you raise that hand? I'll see it and I'll pray for you and give you some instructions after the service. I need to be saved. Number three, how much? How much? How much do you love Jesus? Do you love him? Do you love him more than life? Do you love him? Preacher, pray for me and my love to the Lord. Pray for me, my love for Jesus. Would you pray for me? Here's my hand. Pray for me. I want to love him more. I want him to have my life and my all. Pray for me this morning. Thank you. You may take it down. That's a tall order. That's a tall order, but he'll help you. And then number four, unspoken request unspoken request in my heart. Would you remember me in closing prayer? Unspoken request. Something only the Lord knows and I know and he's been talking in my heart about. Would you remember me in that prayer? And Father, we praise you and thank you for your love to us. Lord, where, where will we be without your love? Love is a verb. We know that. Love shows action. Oh God, my prayer this morning for the Emmanuel Baptist Church and people who are a part of it or have been a part of it and have strayed, have slipped away, have decided something is more important than Jesus. Oh God, have mercy. Have mercy on those who've used too long the excuse of the pandemic it's gone it's over with it's done oh god that your people would get back on and remember your day the lord's day honor you sunday's the lord's day a special day so special for the jews that anything done on the sabbath that was a Saturday, not a Sunday. Great harm would come from the people. Now, Lord, we go to church on Sunday, no longer Saturday because of the resurrection. Sunday, we commemorate 
the resurrection. Oh God, how can your people be so callous, so cold and indifferent to negate the Lord's house on Sunday? Have mercy is my prayer. Bless this invitation. Have your way in our hearts. Oh God, that you could have your way. That we'd lift up the flag of surrender, the white flag, and be for thee. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We're singing 277. You need to come for a prayer. Would you come step out in the first stanza? Come and do business with the Lord. God spoke to your heart. Would you come? First word. Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. He will save you, he will save you, he will save you now. For Jesus shed his precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Plunge now into the crib that washes white as snow. Singing, praying, coming. Only trust Him. Only trust Him. Only trust Him now. He He will save you. Save you now. Yes, Jesus is the truth, the way that leads you into rest. Believe in Him without delay, and you are truly blessed. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. Here it is. Come then and join this holy band and unto glory go to dwell with Him where joy immortals blow. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. And you may be seated for a moment. So if you look around, you're seeing uh, fall colors, and we know that in just a few days, Thursday, December begins. So this Friday evening at 6 o'clock, if you're available to help 